Today we're going to do a quick introduction to electronics and the Arduino system. We're going to keep it simple, just go over enough to get us started so that we can build some more exciting circuits with the Arduino. Firstly, there are two types of electrical signals. There's alternating current, AC, and direct current, DC. Alternating current is what you normally have from an outlet, and what that means is that the direction that the electrical current is flowing keeps changing back and forth at a very quick speed. Direct current is always just flowing in one direction and that's how it's going to be with the battery which is what we're going to use for all of our projects. So to really talk about electricity we need to understand what voltage, current and resistance are. Voltage is the pushing power that electricity has and that's going to come from our battery or our power source such as 9 volts or 3 volts. Then current is going to be measured in amps. That is the actual flow of the current. Uh, you can kind of think of that as water through flowing through a pipe. And then the third part of that is resistance which is measured in ohms. That is the amount of Obviously, resistance in the, the circuit, um, it slows down the, the current, the more resistance there is. Now, there's a direct relation between all three of those things, and that is able to be determined with Ohm's law. It's very important if you are doing anything with electricity to be able to do Ohm's law. If you have two of the, the measurements, you can find the third one, um, and you can use this little triangle chart to do it if for example if we're looking for voltage we simply take our current which is I and we multiply it by our resistance and that gives us our voltage if we're looking for current we take voltage and we divide it by resistance and then lastly if we're looking for resistance we take voltage and we divide it by current and that gives us our resistance. And that's really the only thing we need to know to, to start working with electricity. It's, it's simple but there's a lot that we can do with that. There are two kinds of, of circuits. There is a closed and an open circuit. When you have a closed circuit everything is connected and the current is able to flow through the entire circuit powering whatever our load is, in this case a light bulb. When we have an open circuit, there's a break in the circuit. Current is not able to flow through, so the light bulb, or whatever our load is, will not turn on. And this could be because we haven't connected the circuit together properly, but it's also because we don't want it to be turned on, such as a switch. We open the switch, and the circuit won't turn on until we close the switch. There are two types of circuits that can be built. There's series in which, as you can see on this diagram, it just flows one way through everything and then there's a parallel circuit where it breaks up into separate branches. There's three separate branches on this one. Uh, we don't need to get into it too much but we, we do need to just have a basic understanding of what that means. Now we're going to start talking about some different components in the circuit. The first one that we're going to talk about are resistors. Um, as the name implies they add resistance to the circuit and they reduce the flow of electrical current. Um, they can come in different ratings um, and they're measured in ohms and the way you tell how many ohms one is is based off of the three color bands there. Um, we're not going to get into here but I will give you guys a chart that you can use to look up the, the resistance value of any given resistor. When we build a circuit, we're going to use something called a schematic that will show us how to lay out all of the different components and how to connect them. And every component has a unique symbol that is used for it. And this one is for the resistor. It's just a zigzag line. So whenever we see the zigzag line symbol, we know that there is a resistor there in the circuit. The next component that we're going to talk about is are switches. So we're going to go through some, some different ones. The first one here is actually a button rather than a switch, but it's the, the same principle. When the button is up, the circuit is off, and then when you push it down, it closes the circuit, creating an, a closed circuit. And then we have a toggle switch. You just toggle the little part on and off, and that will turn the switch on and off. 
and the next component is a slide switch you just slide this back and forth and it will open and close the circuit and the final uh, version here is a reed switch it uses a magnet to open and close there are little bits of metal here in the middle when the magnet is there it closes them there are all kinds of switches available but these are some of the most basic ones to be familiar with here is the schematic symbol for a switch it's got the two connections here and here and this part here represents the switch when it's like this with a break between the the two connections it's open and then when it's closed a line between the two components it's a, a closed switch and the circuit is on the next thing we're going to talk about is an LED which is a light emitting diode uh, what it is is a little bit of silicone and when electrical current flows through it it emits light and they can come in different different color values red green yellow blue white infrared and you can get ones that are multiple colors there are two legs on an LED and it's important to make sure that we connect them properly or it won't work because it will only allow current to flow in one direction. You can tell it by the length of the legs. The long leg is the anode and that needs to be hooked up to the positive side of the circuit. And then the short leg is the cathode which needs to be hooked up to the negative side also known as ground. Here's the schematic for for one it's a uh, your cathode and your anode side and the arrows show that the light's coming out because there are several different kinds of diodes other than just light emitting diodes and we'll talk about those in another class but once it has these arrows coming out that's how we know that it's an LED and then the last component that we're going to talk about today are batteries. This is a 9 volt battery. There are lots of different batteries. You have AAA, AA, and then a wide variety of other ones. This is what actually provides the power to the circuit. And there's a positive and a negative side to the battery, and we need to make sure we hook those up in the correct order as well. For 9 volt, this side is our positive, the little one, and then the negative side, or the ground, is this side. Here's the schematic symbol for a battery. So now that we know all of those different schematic symbols, we can see it in a circuit. We have our 9 volt battery here. We have a 1000 ohm or 1k ohm resistor. We have a switch that turns our circuit on and off. And we have our LED, our light emitting diode. So now that the switch is open, current cannot flow through so the LED is off but if we close that switch current can go through because it's a closed circuit it will light up the LED and it will just keep going around in a circle so now that we've got our basic understanding of electronics we can move on to the actual Arduino which is what we're gonna base all of our projects on um, the Arduino is a open source computer hardware and software device uh, open source means that it's open for anyone to use in any way they want and you can you don't have to pay any any money to anyone for any ideas that have previously been developed with it so it's a great great device for making projects on the the heart of the Arduino is a microcontroller chip um, the ones we're using it's a AT mega 328 and what a microcontroller does is it can take readings in and it can give out out voltage so that allows us to hook up sensors to the environment tell what's going on write code that makes a decision and then activate different things such as motors lights or whatever we want based off of off of that code so some other components are we have the USB connector here this is how we connect it to our computer we write our code on the computer and then we upload it to the chip through the USB connection um, another very important part are all these pins here. Um, these are input output or IO pins. They allow us to connect wires into the circuit to run the sensors or to power power anything, um, go through some of the different things. These pins here, six of those, the A pins are analog in. That means that they can read any voltage between 0 and 5 volts and so we can get different steps so we can actually tell how much voltage is coming from something which is very useful with a sensor. Our digital pins 
just have a simple zero or five volts either they're getting a signal or they're not it's if a switch is on the switch is off that kind of thing um, that we have different points throughout the circuit here and these two here where we can connect up ground and then we have a 5 volts and a 3.3 volts output so if we want to power a different sensor or something we can do that with those connections and then we have the V in down here voltage in and that is where we can hook up a battery to, to power the Arduino instead of using the connector here. And this is a connector that we can hook up to a wall connector to power the Arduino if we want to. And then there's a reset button here if we want to reset it. And there's a couple of small LEDs. There's an on one here and then there's a, a signal one on here so we can actually test our programs using just the Arduino and that LED. Now that we, we know the basics of the Arduino, we, we can start connecting that up so that we can start building projects very simply. The next thing we're going to want to talk about with this is the IDE. And that's where we start doing our, our actual code that, that powers the Arduino and tells it what to do in different situations. So when we want to go ahead and start making a, a program for Arduino, we can work in our IDE or the Integrated Development development environment. Um, so this box right here is where we write all our code. We'll go over real quickly just some of the, the buttons. We have this check mark which is the verify button. That's when we've written some code and we want to check that everything is okay with it or if there's any issue. So we press that button. Down in this little black box down here it will tell us if our code is okay or if there's something we need to fix. When we're happy with everything we've written and we want to upload it to our board, we'll upload it and we'll, we'll make all the connections and we will upload it using this arrow button here and that will put it on the actual Arduino board and at that point everything's ready to run. There are a few other buttons here. This is to start a new sketch, this is to open one and this is to save our current set sketch. So just to explain what a sketch is, that's our code that we've written and saved and we upload to the Arduino. We refer to that as a sketch instead of code. Uh, within the actual sketch itself there are two parts that have to be there every time, two functions. There's the setup function, that's all of this. What that's doing is going in and determining, setting the initial settings of the program. Once that's done we will move into our loop function which is here. And the loop function is just the function that's called repeatedly, it just goes over and over again through that loop until we power the board down. So that's really the, the basics of how the IDE works and how, how Sketch works. And we'll, as we move on to different projects, we'll, we'll talk a little more about what's going on on each one. So a thing that makes Arduino particularly useful for us to develop new projects with is how popular it is. Um, millions of people around the world are using it and developing new things for it. And often what people will do is they will write something called a library, which is a, a set of code that takes the complicated steps and breaks them into simple commands that we can use. There are some pre-existing libraries, those would be these ones that are there on the Arduino and you get to those by going to sketch here, import library and that will show you what we already have and what we can do is we can also add in new files. We just go to add file and then we'll have our, our library saved somewhere on our computer as a .zip file. We just select that and that will add that library into our program and then we can just use that library rather than having to code everything the hard way. Um, it's just a quick brief introduction here to the concept of libraries. We'll actually go over it when we do a project. And the final part of the IDE that I want to go over before we get started is the serial monitor. The serial monitor is something that we can initialize on the Arduino and it allows us to get direct readings on our computer screen of, of what the Arduino is getting. So if it's a voltage or a timer, whatever we want to do, we, we can code it so that it's giving us readings like the ones on here at the intervals that we want to get them. And once again, when we're using the serial monitor, we'll get into it more in that class. But I just wanted to introduce the concept here. So once you get started with Arduino, there are all kinds of crazy great projects you can do. People are building quadcopters. 
laser instruments, robots, from simple to advanced robots. So there's all kinds of things you can do and some of them are a little intimidating. What we're going to do is we're going to start out with some very simple basic projects and we'll work our way up and then by the end of the class you'll have the tools you need to move on, on your own and just the sky is the limit from what you can build with Arduino.